What's up guys, in this video we're going to be talking about the number one mistake that I see guitarists make on praise and worship teams that, spoiler alert, I've made two. Let's go. So we're repainting my room. That's why I hope Dad doesn't mind. I'm shooting in his office. He, he didn't need it today, so I don't don't tell him I'm up here though. Hey guys, my name is Evan DeDio, and like I said in the beginning, in this video, we're talking about the number one mistake that I see guitarists make on praise and worship teams that I've, I've made this mistake too. And if you make this mistake, don't get under condemnation. Almost all lead guitarists do this at the beginning of their playing in the church, and it, because it's so it's so easy to make this mistake, that's why I made it, that's why uh, lots of other people are making it too. But before we get into the video, make sure you like this video, comment if you have any questions below, subscribe for more videos like this one, but let's get into the video. Three and a half or so years ago, I learned the minor and the, uh, the minor pentatonic scale and the major scale, which links are above and below in the description below to instructional videos. And I started playing in church around the same time. I watched professional guitarists on praise and worship teams do awesome, I mean awesome licks and riffs and I, I, I wanted to do it. <laughs> and this is where I made the mistake. I played too much. Knowing how to play awesome licks doesn't necessarily give one the right to play it. There are designated times to play those awesome lead riffs and licks and stuff, but uh, like the instrumental sections or uh, before a bridge or after a bridge or something like that, but not while someone is singing. And here's the point. My mistake and what I see other people doing is play like lead guitar, like, you know, awesome licks while the praise and worship leader is trying to lead the congregation somewhere. It kind of distracts from what the people should be paying attention to, especially if you're really good, because then they're going to stop and go, Oh, that was cool. Can you do that again? <laughs> but here, here is the tweetable quote of the day. Knowing when to play is knowing when not to play. Oh, I'm going to say that again. Knowing when to play is knowing when not to play. And that was my mistake. But I hope that this video helped you in knowing how knowing how to play the licks doesn't necessarily mean you should, but then saving it for the right opportune moments like an instrumental or a bridge, that's when you can do it and really praise God with your instrument. But thanks for watching again. Make sure you like this video, comment if you have any questions, subscribe for more videos just like this one, and to support the channel. On this channel, we aim to bring fun, family-friendly guitar tutorials, music theory lessons, product reviews, and song lessons here on YouTube. So make sure you stay tuned for other instructional and all kinds of other teaching videos. Actually, more videos like this one. In fact, if you have any uh, comments or if you have any other video suggestions, let me know in the comments that are possibly like this video. Maybe there's something you've noticed that guitarists do that I might do too. Maybe we can talk about the capo in the future. I don't, I don't know if I should do the capo though. That, that could be a little too controversial. Or this could go with lots of other types of musicians too. So make sure you share it with your whole band. But again, thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.